Hello, Duffy. Where do you eat me to eat? Archie, the manager speaking. Duffy ain't here. Hello, Duffy. Uh, tonight, Clifton Fatterman. He had a mental brain from the radio. <laughs> huh? Is he the guy who says what? Madam, what is your problem? <laughs> no, Duffy, you're thinking of Mark Anthony. <laughs> This is the guy that asked the questions on information, please. Very brainy guy. Huh? Oh, yeah, maybe you're right at that, Duffy. Uh, what brains does it take to ask questions? <laughs> yeah. Well, anyways, we're stuck with him. Yeah. He's coming down to lecture to the Lord Byron Ladies Literary Society. Uh, well, don't worry, Duffy. Uh, I'm writing the lecture for him, so he can't louse us up. <laughs> huh? Uh, the crowd here... Uh, the usual gang of crumbs. Uh, yeah, but, oh, by the way, Moriarty just come in, uh, he's very sore at the government. Yeah, for canceling last year's income tax. Well, you remember when he filled out his return, he chiseled so much he didn't pay nothing? <laughs> now he figures he's losing money. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll call you back, Duffy. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to Duffy's. Come on in and meet Finnegan, Eddie the Waiter, Miss Duffy, Tito Gazar, Peter Van Steeden and his orchestra, our special guest tonight, Clifton Fadiman, and Archie himself, Ed Gardner. Hey, Mr. Archie. Yeah? Well, what happened to the sign? What sign, Eddie? The, the watch your hats and coats sign. There it is, only I rephrased the words so that uh, Clifton Fatima will feel more at home here. Read it. Let me see. Uh, maintain scrutiny of thy chapeaus and hats. Hmm. <laughs> nice and confusing, ain't it? Yes, isn't it? Uh, uh, it's a quotation from Shakespeare. Uh, did you ever see any of uh, Shakespeare's plays, Eddie? One, as you like it. Well... I didn't like it. <laughs> hmm. oh, I don't know. Maybe he had an off day that day. Yeah, hello, Arch. Well, Clifton Finnegan. Hello, Finnegan. Yeah, Arch, look at this uh, boy of my crowd. <laughs> the, a poem by Crackpot O'Toole of Fortune. The dedicated right at me, personal. Oh, yeah, that's nice. What's the poem, Finnegan? Yeah, I'll read it to you. The, so many fools and morons... And some is even judge. But you, dear Clifton, combine them all. Nature has gave you the words. <laughs> uh, 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 well, a guy must really like me, huh? Yeah, he must. Uh, you uh, may not know it, Finnegan, but that poem is written in pure cubic centimeter. <laughs> uh, centimeter? You mean he's going to charge me for it? No, oh, Finnegan, if he charged, you'd have to pay at least a nickel a meter. Oh. Uh, don't forget, that's an original crackpot. Archie? Oh, oh, yes, Miss Duffy. Did you see my Dostoevsky? <laughs> Your what? My Dostoevsky. Is it animal, vegetable, or mineral? No, it's a book. Miss Duffy, what would you be doing with a book? Well, Clifton Fadiman's coming down here, and I don't want him to catch me not reading. <laughs> Well, naturally, yeah. You see, if everybody stopped reading, authors would stop writing. And if authors stopped writing because nobody was reading, Mr. Fatterman, being a critic, couldn't read what authors were writing, and that would put an end to his writing about reading. And the poor man would be out of a job. Hmm. Yeah, I see what you mean. Or to put it another way, if authors write and people uh, please, don't Please, Miss Duffy, I don't think I care to go around again. Uh... <laughs> Dostoevsky. Who ever heard of Dostoevsky? Oh, you. You probably never even heard of Shakespeare. Miss Duffy, not alone have I heard of Shakespeare. I happen to know Bacon, the man who plagiarized him. <laughs> who? Sir Francis Bacon, the man who wrote every word that Shakespeare ever wrote. <laughs> Archie, do you mean to stand 
in there and say that the greatest writer that ever wrote didn't? <laughs> yes, I do. Shakespeare, the so-called part of Stratford Avenue. <laughs> I maintain that he is strictly a phony. Archie, how can you say such a thing about a man who's too dead to defend himself? <laughs> Miss Duffy, you dig him up and I'll tell it to him to his face. Well, well wait a minute, Archie. Maybe, maybe we're talking about an, not the same Shakespeare. What was the first name of yours? William. Yeah, that's the one, all right. Of course, William Randolph Shakespeare. <laughs> Besides, Miss Duffy, when you talk about guys like Shakespeare, it ain't necessary to mention their first names. Everybody knows who you mean. I differ with you. Uh, in what respect? How about Washington? Miss Duffy, if I went up to a strange guy and said Washington, I'm sure the guy would know that I meant George. Not if he was selling train tickets. <laughs> If I was buying a train ticket, I would say Washington, D.C. Why don't you say Shakespeare, D.C.? Because I ain't going to Shakespeare, D.C. Why not? Because I can't get a room. <laughs> Look, Miss Duffy, I got Clifton Fatterman coming down here to read my lecture to Mrs. Piddleton and them dames, and I got a lot on my mind. <laughs> Now, waiting for the arrival of uh, Clifton Farnham and Mrs. Pilton and Lord Byron Lady's Literary Society, uh, you'll be uh, simply enchanted to know that we will now hear a song by Mr. Tito Gazar, uh, Mexico's answer to the Andrew Sisters. <laughs> um, what is the uh, song, Tito? I will sing that beautiful song entitled Sibone. Well, that's your own for negative. Go ahead and sing it. <laughs> Ladies will please one. Si vos no mi sueño, si no es la queja de mi voz. Si vos no, si no viene, va a morir de amor. Si vos Yo 
de tu palma pienso en ti. Se I guess so. Any wine? Well, we're running a little short. Well, add some chicory to what you got. Okay. But chicory added to chicory is going to taste a little like... <laughs> uh, well, he'd probably be reading a book anyway. He won't notice it. Uh... Oh, Archie, dear boy. Well, Mrs. Piddleton, how are you? You're looking great. Archie, you know I look a fright. All right. <laughs> Uh, what, uh, makes you look like such a fright? Oh, I've had a terrible experience. Terrible. I had to come down here by subway. Good gracious. <laughs> the subway. How ghastly. Okay. Well, there was no alternative. You see, my limousine is all to come back. Yeah, how huh? what year? <laughs> all to come back. A French expression, out of action. Oh, you mean like OPA? OPA? An American expression, out of gas. <laughs> that uh, subway must be uh, simply livid for one to ride in, huh? Oh, yes, yes. What encounters such a bourgeois class of society? Oh, simply bourgeois, yeah, yeah. Makes one sorry one went through the trouble of ducking under the turnstile. <laughs> Then you have been in the subway. Uh, only in London. <laughs> of course, uh, over there we uh, refer to it as the lift. <laughs> but uh, so much for conversation. I'm glad to see you. Well, it's a delight to be here again on the same. Except poor Mr. Duffy. He seems to have aged considerably. Mrs. Piddleton, that's the moose head you're looking at. <laughs> moose head? Oh, Archie. Archie, I'm afraid you'll have to remove it. Why? My doctor's orders. I'm allergic to stuffed animals. Oh, yes, Mrs. Grib. Uh, we're, waiting. we're waiting for you and Mrs. Allen. Well, Mr. Spiderman isn't here yet. Clifton Spiderman. <laughs> There's a boot here, and it does something to my hay fever. I should do what? It already has been sharp. <laughs> oh, yes, he's speaking tonight on literature. <coughs> Don't go, Dr. Booth. Well, we'll wait for you, darling. Goodbye. Oh. Hello? Oh, well, thank you. Mrs. Uh, Piddleton, the operator says Gesundheit. <laughs> Mrs. Piddleton into the kitchen. Uh, there, she won't smell the most. Mm. I see what you mean. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, what, Miss Duffy? Ain't that Mr. Fatterman coming in? Oh, sure, Clifton Fatterman. <laughs> Oh, Clifton Spiderman. Oh, you kip, old boy, old boy. I I'm uh, looking for someone named Archie. Just a minute. I'm Archie. You had the pleasure of meeting me just a short month ago. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm wearing my wife's glasses. Your wife's glasses? Oh, that's different. I can't expect your wife to know me. Uh, oh, uh, by the way, Mr. Spiderman, this is uh, Miss Duffy. Plaza 59970. I beg your pardon? Well, you're always asking questions, so I thought I'd give you the answer first. Miss Duffy, Mr. Fatterman is an intellectual. He don't go out with things. Well, that intellectual I ain't. In fact, uh, when it comes to dames, my taste is positively lowbrow. Plaza 5997. Please, Miss Duffy. Mr. Fatterman just came here. Uh, Kip, uh, by the way, uh, uh, speaking of books... Now, who was? I was. Uh, speaking of books, uh, did you ever read any of the works of the famous poet and forger, Crackpot O'Toole? O'Toole. What sort of things does he write? Uh, mostly sonnets and bum checks. <laughs> uh, that's him... Sonnets and bum checks. Uh, that's him over there tilting the pinball machine. Uh, hey, Crackpot. Yeah, I uh, see. Crackpot, come here. Uh, Clifton Fireman, meet Crackpot O'Toole. Crackpot, meet Clifton Fireman. <laughs> you two guys should have a lot in common. Oh, you're a fortune, Mr. Fireman? <laughs> Crackpot, Mr. Fireman is from Information, please. <laughs> Kip, you'll uh, pardon Crackpot's ignorancy. Uh, he's been upstate, up the river, uh, the uh, arsening. Uh, oh, you mean in the clink? In the clink, yeah, yeah, in a manner of speaking, yes. Uh, uh, we can talk about it, can't we, uh, Crackpot? Why not? It was nothing. Only a few years for forgery. I made a little innocent mistake when I signed a check. I put two T's in Vanderbilt. <laughs> thing was laughable. <laughs> uh, by the way, Kip, someday if you get a chance, I'd like you to get a look at uh, Crackpot's adaptation of Shakespeare. Crackpot? You rewrote Shakespeare? Yep. I rewrote 23 of his plays. How long did it take you? 23 minutes. <laughs> 23 minutes, Crackpot? I bet you Shakespeare himself didn't even write it that fast. Well, after all, Arch, I got an edge on the guy. I'm ambidextrous. <laughs> What's that? Two-handed dexterous. <laughs> I can write with both hands. Uh, Mr. Fatterman, uh, couldn't you use a uh, crackpot on an information play sometime? But, uh, Archie, we have a poetry expert, John Kieran. Granted, but uh, suppose you ask Kieran to quote you something, uh, say, from... Uh, Lord Byron. Could he do it? Of course. He could quote whole stanzas. Could Crackpot do that? Not alone could Crackpot quote whole stanzas, he could give you the whole poem in Byron's own handwriting. <laughs> Thanks, Dodge. Okay, Crackpot. Uh... Dodge? Yeah? Littleton wants to know when the lecture's gonna start. Oh, any minute, Eddie. Go over and talk to her. Keep her happy for a second. I've been talking to her. I say good sun high, she said thank you. I say good sun high, she said thank you. I say good sun high, she said thank you. It's pretty monotonous conversation. Well, talk to her anyways. Uh, are you uh, ready for the lecture, Mr. Fatterman? Already. Okay, uh, you ready, Danny? Ready. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Just a second, Mr. Fatterman. What's right is right. Danny started first. <laughs> Besides, you ain't uh, studied the lecture that I wrote for you. You wrote a lecture for me? You seem amazed. I'll go over it with you in a minute.
Mr. Fatterman, uh, uh, leave us get started, huh? Archie, did I hear you correctly? You wrote a lecture for me? That's right. And you expect me to read it? Don't worry, there ain't many big words. <laughs> and uh, what ones there is, I wrote out in capital type. Uh, here it is, sir. Uh, but, but I brought my own lecture. Your own lecture? Look, Fatterman, suppose you was in my spot. Would you let every Tom, Dick, and Harry come in off the street and read his own stuff? How do I know it's clean? How do I know it makes sense? Well, I was just going to talk about the rudimentary forms of iambic pentameter. You see? Listen, in this business, we've got to protect ourselves. Well, all right, I'll read your speech, but, but there's one thing. What? If I get fired from information, please, can I eat here? <laughs> that I wouldn't advise. <laughs> uh, now, uh, please, leave us get going, huh? Oh, uh, Archie. Uh, Archie, oh. when's the lecture going to start? Uh, any minute, Mrs. Pilton. Uh, oh, uh, Mrs. P., uh, this is uh, Clifton Fatima. Oh, Mr. Fatima, I want you to know how seriously happy it makes us girls to have a man like you talk to us. <laughs> Mrs. Piddleton. <laughs> These days, it makes girls deliriously happy if any man talks to us. <laughs> uh, leave us get on with the lecture, huh? Uh, trumpets, please. Thank you. Uh, your man is improving, Mr. Van Steeden. Thank you. Uh, ladies... <clears throat> Introduce a man who needs no introduction. So, without further introducing him, I uh, present you Mr. Clifton Fatterman. A lecture, Mr. Fatterman. Uh, thank you, one and all. <laughs> Ladies of the Lord Byron Ladies Literary Society. My subject for tonight is contemptuary literature. <laughs> I will discuss contemptuary literature from literature in the Middle Ages to books for children. <laughs> literature is divided into three parts. Fiction, non-fiction, and... Archie, where's the third part? I couldn't think of it. I went nuts. <laughs> One. Literature was started by the cavemen who used to chop out stories in stone with an axe, hence the term hack writer. <laughs> this, however, was very hard on the circulating libraries as people got tired carrying home them stone books. <laughs> Besides, many times the stones would fall on the author, crushing him, hence the expression, pulp writer. <laughs> this led to the invention of sheepskin, which up till then had only been used for diplomas. <laughs> Literature, literature has gave birth to more writers than any other profession. <laughs> Namely, among whom are Shakespeare, Bacon, Dickens, and Sir Walter Lipton. <laughs> among the French writers are Voltaire, Charlemagne, and Francois Cone. <laughs> Say, Archer, you left out Mademoiselle from Ormond's here. That's a different kind of literature. <laughs> now, now, among the American writers is also a great assortment of literary authors. Just as music has its three Bs, Bach, Bach, and Buchhoven... <laughs> American literature has its three O's, O'Neill, Odette, and O'Toole. <laughs> <sighs> Next comes the Russian.
fiction writers. Among who is Tolstoy, Rimsky, Corsica, Dostoevsky, and the greatest Russian of them all. Oh, no, I can't. I can't. I can't. Go ahead, Batman. Ivan Ho. <laughs> I can't go on with it. My reputation will be ruined. Ladies, the lecture is over. I thank you. Oh, Mr. Fadiman. Yes, Mrs. Fiddleman. I've heard you speak many times. I've read every word you've ever written. Your books, your reviews in the New Yorker magazine. Yes. And there's one thing I want to tell you. In my personal opinion, this is the first time you've ever made sense. <laughs> to leave Duffy's for the evening, but let's all meet again at Duffy's next week when our guest will be Monty Woolley. <laughs> you have a half hour next Tuesday evening at this same time. Remember, Duffy's where you late me date. Yeah, Duffy, next week, Monty Woolley. Hey, yeah, the guy with the beard. Huh? The hot weather? Uh, don't worry, Duffy. Uh, nature takes care of them things. Uh, in the summer, he sheds. Oh, <laughs> my